Okay, it is the day after Christmas. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas holiday. Uh, tried to do this video yesterday, and obviously we didn't get to it. The um, just did not have a stable connection for whatever reason, so uh, we just kind of avoided that. But this video is is to talk about our Himalayans. Uh, they're kind of a unique color. Uh, the color is temperature sensitive. Uh, it is uh, one of our favorite breeds. They're very relaxed animals, very calm. You can train these guys to pose um, quite well. They are, are the only rabbit in the cylindrical body type. I'm going to scoot this back just a hair so you can kind of get a better picture here, hopefully. And hopefully he'll cooperate. So Himalayans are are very long, flat rabbits. They're the only breed in their body type. Uh, they they need to be. You want to get them uh, that are fairly long in length. Uh, you know you can pose these in several different ways, but the proper way to pose them is again have the front feet in 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 line with the the eye and then these back feet need to be flat so their their whole whole foot needs to be flat square on the table kind of run your hand down the body and that what that does is it just kind of creates a, a really nice straight top line on this rabbit the this is how they should be posed. Uh, they're really actually very docile animals. They um, tend to uh, be very relaxed. You can work with them. The easiest way to relax them is kind of roll them back and forth just a little bit and keep that top line nice and straight. You want the sides to all be in line. Uh, what you'll see a lot of times is these these rabbits towards the the hind quarter will get rather uh, wide in the hips. Uh, this is a smaller version of, of the Hemis that you'll see. A lot of the time you'll find them that are, are much larger than this. Uh, this guy is a grand champion of ours and he's he's had his share of, of wins. Uh, the color on these guys, you know, their ears are supposed to be dark, their feet are all dark and their tail, including the underside of the tail, and then they have a, a unique nose marking, which we refer to as the egg marking, or their egg, and it's to kind of denotes to their shape, which I'll show you in a second. Now, posing these guys, as you can see, is quite easy. What you can do is you can scoot those feet too forward, uh, too far. Uh, they start to look like a, a kind of like a, a Californian, uh, with a, you know, they have that, that, that arch top line. Uh, they're just not comfortable in that position. You can also get them stretched out where they're incredibly long and those back feet are not square on the table and you can kind of see that, 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 that sag right there in the, in the top line and that, that's something you really don't want. Uh, so it's so important to, to get the rabbit back feet placed on the table securely and and get them all kind of stretched out. Uh, this is how you can pose them. You can get two to three of these at a time on the table. Uh, makes it a pretty, pretty easy breed to work with. Um, I'm going to turn him and we're we're losing. Oh, I know. You you want to dig. I know. You want us to dig and play. I, you're just being a fussy man. Wanting to play. Okay. Hang, hang tight. So what we're going to do again is we're going to get those feet sitting square on the table again. And he's not used to somebody being behind him when we're doing posing usually it's always from the side but you can kinda see 
his, his hips do flare out a little bit, just a tad. And that, but otherwise, he's a beautiful rabbit, and he's wanting to look around and see what we're doing. But you know, nice egg marking to his face there. You can see why it's kind of in the shape of an egg. That's why we call it the egg marking. Nice dark color to that egg. I'm going to get him picked up a little bit. Now his the color should come up a little bit higher on his front boots. And he's not going to want to let me show you. Uh, the back feet, the, the height of that, that boot should come up high enough. It should be fully dark. And <laughs> they are fun rabbits, trust me. And he's just he's just having a blast here, which is typical for him. He's, they, they just they're fun. They're a fun breed. They're really great for for people that are new to the to the breed. And he just thinks it's just so much fun to to dig and 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 try to you know play with everything. He he. We call this guy Snoopy just because well he he's always up into your business no matter what you're doing. And and that is how you would pose this this variety this breed here and now this is a black here and you know it's obviously pretty clear that he's a black I'm gonna go put him up I'm gonna grab a couple of youngsters to kinda of evaluate some of them and uh, that way we can get them out on the table but let me go put this guy up and I'll be right back got here I actually went ahead and brought out a another variety just to kind of show you something this girl has incredible length a body and she's actually not quite as hippie back here she doesn't flare out quite as much as that other one but she does she's a much longer rabbit she is um, incredibly long now one of the things I didn't mention earlier when I was talking about the color is you'll notice here on the on her head there there's a little bit of what we call smut which is which is uh, that that kind of dirty color that you see above the eyes that is allowed in this breed um, to have the smut on on the head you cannot have any smut basically from behind the ears and further back. It is a disqualify, uh, disqualifier for a rabbit. Now just because a rabbit has smut somewhere on its body back here behind the head does not mean that it will stay. One of the unique things about this color is that it is temperature sensitive. So when they molt that color could come in completely different. Now I really like this this little lilac doe she's produced a couple of litters for us and although she doesn't quite have maybe the midsection of the buck she has an exceptional amount of length she still has that, that pretty decent top line considering uh, she has a decent markings this is again a lilac it's a little bit lighter in color you can usually tell on the tail here uh, it's just easier to tell by the tail I find you can set a black next to it or a chocolate and you can usually determine what what variety you have it's a lot easier if you work all four varieties um, unless you're just wanting to stick with blacks you can get a couple of blacks but generally black is a lot easier to discern when you start getting into to the blues and the and the lilacs it can be a little harder um, but but this girl is actually a fantastic girl. She again, very nice nice rabbit. She actually has more length than him. She also has more length. Uh, we haven't shown her a whole lot, but we probably should given given how nice she has finished out. She's a very young doe. And again, you can see 
that nose marking again. It's a little rough around the edges and a little, you know, a little, a little faded around the edges there. But in general, we want to see a nice clean marking transition to the ears right there. You want those ears to be nice and clean. You don't want to see any brindling or anything like that. As far as her boots, her boots come up really good on height on her front and on her back they're good and there's no brindling on those on those legs and on that color and brindling I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute uh, but she's a, a wonderful doe, a good example of a lilac doe of really awesome length. Let me go get one of her babies here and we'll take a look. All right, we got one of her youngsters. Now, this is a black, and the reason I grabbed this one is because it will be a good example. Now, we haven't worked with posing these. We don't usually work with posing them on this breed until they're at least three and a half, four months old, which these are getting to that age where we have to start kind of working with them a little bit. But posing for this, this breed is really easy. Again, love the, the top line on this rabbit back feet again square on the table uh, good width of body all the way through maybe just a little bit in the hips yet I'm pretty sure this is a doe I didn't look to see if it was one of the boys or the girls but it's uh, given we're a little bit more fussy probably a doe good dark color on those ears for the most part and when I was talking about earlier about brindling um, you can see this here on the ears there's a little bit of a white coming up on the ears right here at the base of the ear right there and that's just brindling that will molt out with time what I'm most concerned about when I when I, we have youngsters of this age um, is to just look at the type on the rabbit and I'm very happy with the type on this rabbit it's gonna have to spend some time growing yet uh, they're far from it uh, they got another three months of growing, three and a half, almost four months of growing yet. So this rabbit will probably be quite, quite long, good, good, real good length, real good quality, tight. And your feet are not down. There we go. I'm still holding them up. There we go. So I'm going to be really, pretty pleased with this one. And for his first time posing, this is not a bad pose and we're just kind of going to lay there and, and be good and not going to create any havoc. Uh, other things I'll look, you know, say the nose marking there is really nice, bold, good, nice size to that marking. So th this is going to be a nice little doe, uh, probably a doe. Uh, we'll go grab another one. Now these hemis can uh, certainly put out some litters. Now, one of the things you're going to notice about this one right off, and I can tell you right away, is this is not probably this is not going to be a black. This is a blue. Um, always tell by the tail, uh, those nose markings. But this is going to be a blue. And it's just like say it's probably going to be even harder to tell on the video the color here, but looking at the tail, that is that is clearly blue. For whatever reason, I can always tell by the tail, and and it's just 
I mean, if I put a black next to this, you would you would say, oh yeah, definitely, um, definitely a blue. Um, this one is a little shorter in body type than the one of its siblings, but I'm very very pleased with the rabbit overall for its first time on the table posing. Great top line of this rabbit uh, for just being a junior. Um, clean the smut on the body. Got a little bit of smut over the face, but just a little bit cleaner, cleaner condition on the forehead. Again, the nose marking could be a fair bit wider, and you can notice here where it lightens up on the side. That'll kind of come in darker after they molt uh, and get their adult fur. Uh, it just kind of is not as dark and as clean around the ears, ear base, and around that nose marking. But in general, very slender rabbit, very slender body style. These are very long, flat rabbits, but you know, for for a junior, this is about the right what we want to see. Again, on this rabbit, we don't see any brindling. We do have some dirtiness here at the base of the ears that will clean up with time. Uh, but the general color of the ears looks good. So it'll be exciting to put blues on the table. We're going to take a look at the boots. Uh, the boot color you'll notice on this one does, doesn't come up quite as high on the front. Good height on the back. No brindling or anything that to talk about. So I'm really pleased that there's no brindling in, in this rabbit. It came in nice and clean. Brindling is genetic. It, is, it sometimes will be more prominent than at others. You can have a, very, uh, a lot of brindling uh, and then they'll molt and it'll come in clean and then the next time you uh, get them, it's just, that's just the way it is with these hemis. Uh, they're just a hard color. They're judged 50% on their color and 50% on their type. So, you know, it's, it's important to work on both equally and get a nice clean rabbit. Again, I, I really like this one here uh, because it's, it is a blue and that's, there's only four varieties. And you can, you can get litters of, I think we had a litter of six, but you can get litters six, seven out of these tiny rabbits. They, they really are producers. They're good mamas. You don't have a lot of problems like you would in some of the dwarf breeds like Holland Lop or, or Netherland Dwarf. Now they can be real... Uh, a, a real problem when it comes to kindling. Not had too many problems with these. Just for, for the age of the rabbit, I'm really not too concerned. I really like the top line. The, the rest of this is just going to take some time. She tends to want to, this one tends to want to, uh, might be a little bit of a, a dip there, but we keep wanting to move our, our feet back. Still like that top line. I still like that. All right, that's a couple of little youngsters. Let's get another one. We've got another youngster here. These are all out of the same litter, so um, if there was any question on that. Now this one's a black, similar to the first rabbit we saw today. Get them back feet square on the table. Get you relaxed a little bit. Again, first time we've we've worked with posing on these animals, and you can just see how relaxed they are on the table when. They just they just kind of know what they what they're supposed to do. I really like the body on this one a little bit more than the other two youngsters. Um, has a very good front midsection and, and good hindquarter. Again, we're wanting to get that those back feet want to rise up. 
but because we're curious. But it's it's so these are such an easy breed. Uh, the challenge they're an easy breed to raise or an easy breed to pose. The challenge with the breed, however, is to get that color to be nice and dark. And she just this one just does not want to sit with its hindquarter in place. I still like that top line. Might be a little bit of a, a rise right here, that, but that that's just a posing thing. Might be a little heavy right there over the shoulders, but again, we're leaning forward again, and that's just going to be practice. We've got a little bit of brindling on this one. You can see it on the ear, right there. A little brindling there. Again, that that will clean up. We're going to take a look at the boots. The boot height is actually fair. Again, a little bit of brindling there at the top of the boots, on the front boots, the back boots. A uh, little bit of brindling, but overall pretty clean on this one. Uh, to get this color right, you, you really have to do a few things. I'm going to go grab one another one here, and then we'll talk about how to get this color to be what it's supposed to be. Uh, that way, you can see on this one also, the, the nose marking is nice, dark, bold color, good width, very full. I'll go get one more and we'll talk about how to get these guys dark and how to keep them looking good. I got another youngster here. He's probably going to be another doe. Again, I I have not checked any of these these guys. Um, I usually like to wait. They there'll come a time when I'll need to check and I'll I'll verify it and do your numbers. And yeah, we're just a little fussy, and so we're probably a doe. I'm going to guess that. Does tend to be, can be a little bit more fussy generally, but they're not mean. They're just, they, they just cantankerous. And this one here is definitely always cantankerous. We want to stick our head through the cage door every time we feed. Where are you going? Come here. I know. You want to, what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? Come here. Relax. Put those feet down. And they just get used to that. That's just a training issue. You know, keep those feet. Again, I've got a, a beautiful top line on this rabbit. She's got a good, good shoulder, good midsection. A little bit wider in the hips, but not, not, I mean, much better than the normal. We'll put it that way. Again, getting those back feet to stay in place is so important. Very nice looking rabbit. She's got, like I say, a little sway going on because we're, we're stretching out. We're just not relaxing. Just got to kind of work with them, just kind of relax them down. Still very pleased with this rabbit. Uh, to get these colors. This is another black. Again, real nice. Width to that nose mark. You can tell how, how large it can be. Um, but by by that edge, I know, by the edges of where it's just not quite as dark and it's a little bit more uh, not, not as clean. So that, that egg marking will likely fill out as the rabbit, when the rabbit molts on its next molt. But to get this clean color, you, you have to keep these rabbits uh, in, a, in a cool environment. And that goes for any rabbits. You know, 80 degrees is really starting to push the limits. You know, I don't really like them over 80 degrees at all. 
um, you'll start to see some different issues start to arise at 85 and I just don't like to keep it that hot. Um, so these guys have to be kept in air conditioning. The color, whether you're raising Californians or you're raising Himalayans, uh, or this, the color Hem Hemi, which you will see in Neville and Dwarf or in some of the other breeds you see it sometimes in Holland Lops. Um, but anything that has this, this unique coloration to the ears, the nose, the feet, and the tail, that, that color is temperature sensitive. So if your rabbit is outside and it's really hot outside generally, um, that color is just not going to be as bold. Now, if you have a rabbit that's not got the color that it needs to have or it's not dark, uh, you can uh, try to keep it in a cool environment until it molts and let that fur come back in and it will come back in dark. However, you know, temperature and humidity, we try to keep ours around 75, 70 degrees or less, roughly. Uh, 70 degrees is the goal, which we usually keep it around that or less year round. And then we keep the, the humidifier going or the dehumidifier going because we're here, here in the south, we want to keep that under 30% humidity. And that just seems to really make a difference with, with just how well that color comes in. We've, we, we have never had a problem with color on our Hemis just because of, of how we raise them. We're, it gets uh, 100 degrees outside. Uh, there's all sorts of other problems you'll run into without sweat side operations. So, uh, everything is indoors here, so we, we're able to keep our rabbits a little bit more consistent on the color, and uh, we only have to deal with mold a couple of times a year, versus if you were outside, you might have to do it in some years three or four times. Uh, it's just a lot easier to be able to, to, to know when they're going. And for the first time, this rabbit is it's just a little scared. We're not sure what to make of this, but certainly not scared of the food ball so but this ra these rabbits like I say you can you can work with them even with her being more than likely a doe get them relaxed still have a, a pretty decent top line to work with again that color will come in and these guys are born pure white they they will have no color at all anything that's, that has this this coloration, what, no matter what breed it is, they'll all be born white. They'll look like ruby-eyed whites, and then all of a sudden uh, the color will start to come in, usually on the nose and the ears first, and a little on the tail, and then those boots will, will kind of catch up. Um, don't see a lot of juniors in Himalayan shown on the table, but we're, we're going to probably take a few here this spring just to, to let them compete again. This one has a tendency to want to be a little bit more fussy. I've got one more, and that's probably the, that would be the last one of this breed. Again, they're a fun breed, and um, they're not too hard to not too hard to raise. All right, this is the last one I've got to evaluate. Again, uh, this one's probably going to be a buck. Again, it's a, it is a black. All of them are black except for the one that's a blue. So that's okay. That's okay. Blue is 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 a fun is a hard, kind of a little bit harder to get get those to come out, but we'll have a lot more of them here going into this summer and next fall. This one's another black, very clean body type, no smut at all. We've got good color on the tail. We have a really nice, uh, actually probably the cleanest ear bases of the others. A little bit of brindling here, a little bit of smut on the head, 
decent O's marking. Has the potential to be wider, it's just not not there yet, and I'll show you that. You can see there has the potential to be a little bit wider, just not quite there. The boots, front boots, have really good height on those front boots. A little bit of brindling yet on the inside. The leg there, the back boots, decent height, a little brindled at the top, but. Again, this one's a little more relaxed. And this is another one that likes to stick its head out the cage door and say hello every day. Doing food and water. This is, they're just hilarious. They they're always sticking their heads out. This whole group does. So when you're you're going through their feeding, they they they're all got their heads stuck out looking at you, waiting for you to come down through there with the food or the hay or whatever it is that day again not a not a bad again focusing on keeping the this rabbit is a little bit shorter in body length than some of the others and will probably finish a little bit shorter has good shoulders comes in a little bit in that midsection this one's a lot like that the uh, the dad which was the first rabbit that I showed you today but again, a little, little bit of a, a little bit more over the, just needs to have a little bit more there. But that, that'll probably fill in with time. But overall, I really like the feel of this rabbit. Just a little bit hippie right there. But again, very much like Dad. Beautiful hemi. Probably going to be a buck here as well. So main thing with these guys is, is to get them pose properly, make sure those back feet are, are square and flat on the table so you can properly evaluate them. And, and one of the common problems is they want to slide out there back feet a little bit and I like to make sure that those full back feet are, are flat on that table. And this one's doing well to get that bold color keep your temperatures under 70 degrees year-round if you're up north that's usually not a problem uh, but uh, in the south it's just really hard with the humidity and the heat so uh, gotta keep them inside if you're here in the south uh, they're they're a fun breed they, they they're absolutely super lovable and relaxed you can pick them up and sit them in your lap and they'll lay there with you uh, until they find something they want to get into and go dig or whatever and uh, you just kind of have to keep working with them until you, you can do it but they are a fantastic breed if you're uh, someone looking to get into showing uh, and you're you're wanting to find out just more about them you can certainly uh, search online about them uh, but there's just not a lot to it really uh, just keep them under 70 degrees and under 30 percent humidity and you will be successful with this nice dark rich color and then the rest is just getting that body type and body type is worth 50 percent so don't forget about that color because a lot of breeds it's all about the quality of type over color uh, this one is just a little different you want a, a good body type to these rabbits that way that they uh, produce well and do well on the show table but have fun with it hope you learned something from this video if you learned something or if you have questions shoot a comment down below give us a thumbs up if you uh, like this video and want to see more videos about other breeds and uh, don't forget to subscribe until next time have a good one